Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to Planet Crafter, or The Planet Crafter, if you're one for, uh, I guess, formal titles like The Duke. Uh, Berkeley, what have we done? Well, Jared, we have landed on this planet, we crash landed on this planet in our little escape pod, and we have started terraforming it. So we've got some plants going in here to make ourselves food. We've got some more plants going upstairs to make us oxygen. We've got some heaters upstairs to uh, warm up this icy barren planet. And outside we've got some electricity going and we've got some drills that are just pumping gas into the atmosphere to uh, try to make an atmosphere. I like that. Today, today pumping gas into the atmosphere is frowned upon, but one day when our atmosphere is stripped away by intense solar storms it will once again be cool to pump gas into the atmosphere yeah encouraged even i uh i've been listening to a very good like astronomy podcast and they talked about how the uh, uh the planet mars used to have enough of an atmosphere to have liquid water we, we can see the surface of mars and know that there was liquid water there once and we can also see that it's not there anymore and their best guess as to why that happened is some solar wind came and just blew their whole atmosphere away. It's just gone. And then you couldn't have liquid water anymore. It would go from ice to water vapor with no liquid state in between. So let's hope that doesn't happen to us, right? Yeah. Or at least let's hope that it doesn't happen at a rate that would make our lifetimes unlivable. Yeah. Yeah. Let it happen later. But it happened to our children. That's yeah. the good old tradition. <laughs> it's, it's not my problem. All right. So we, in case you're a little disoriented, we took a little time to build a little bit between the last time we streamed this and today. We also did some pretty awesome exploration. I'm excited to show you guys some of the things that we found. Um, one thing that I'm struggling with right now, Berkeley, is that I have a ton of seeds and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I should try. Most of them look like food. I don't know if I should try to build planters for them now or wait on that. I think that we will very quickly have more plant seeds than we need. Um... Well, let's see how we're doing on food and if we should build more. Oh, I, I think could we've always got enough throw food them outside. Keep... You could always throw them outside. I think that maybe items never despawn if you just throw them. <laughs> Eventually we will make a trash can, which as far as I can tell, the only purpose of making a trash can is uh, so your game runs more efficiently. Okay. I, I kind of appreciate that they made it so that things don't despawn if you just throw them. Uh -huh. that's, that's pretty cool. I could be wrong about that, but I've never, like... I have dropped things and been surprised that they were still there later. I've never dropped something and then been surprised it was gone. Okay, well, there is a stack of seeds for food behind our little hab. Awesome. And I am going to run out to the big wreck north of us. Okay. Bring air and water and stuff. I, yes. Yep. <laughs> Meg is teasing us for being on time for once. Usually <laughs> she's here saying late, about a minute before we're supposed to start. But we, we got the jump on you all this time. Started four minutes ago. How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? Berkeley, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. I recently watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Okay. And I thought that it was pretty medium of a movie. It didn't it didn't feel so cliche that it was completely uninteresting but at the same time i mean we've had basically a decade of marvel ascendancy 
Well, you could probably trim that down a little bit the last couple of years. Um, do you think that the that that we'll ever get interested in the classic hero saves the world type of story again? I feel like Marvel just released too much of that in so short a time that I I don't know if I'm gonna re truly enjoy that for a long time. Yeah, good question. Um, Chance in the chat asks what movie we're talking about. This is Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I have not seen. Uh, but Jared did. Yeah, I feel like with Marvel, I, I saw trailers for one of the new ones. I don't remember which one it is. I heard things about the new ones that I was just not impressed with. Like, you can't just keep escalating, you know? <laughs> like one movie you save New York City next movie you save America next movie you save the world where do you go after that I guess they I, th I think they did a good job with uh, you save half of life in the whole universe but then they kept escalating what <laughs> how does that work I don't know yeah it just I... it feels cheap at this point to me like if you're not improving the stories you're just like ramping up the stakes without working on the stories we've talked about marvel a lot i'm i'm not much of a marvel fan these days yeah i would agree that i i think at a certain point the stakes become meaningless because there's no um frame of reference that's easily understandable if that makes sense like half the life in all in the whole universe Okay, that's that's bad. That's a bad thing. I think we can all agree. But can you comprehend what that actually is? I can't. Hmm. I don't know. So yeah, and, and I think that the multiverse, um, kind of situation creates or or removes consequences that might otherwise have been there. When yeah, you can definitely. bring like alternate version of somebody in. I don't know. I found a purple tube with oh, I found a fusion reactor. It is empty. Yeah, we need to make fusion cores for those. And when you put them in there, it uh opens up new areas of the wreckage. Okay, we've got some some great opinions in the chat. Susie Moo says the solution is cozy, low stakes Marvel movies. I felt that way with Shang Chi when it came out. That one's not necessarily cozy; it's still like a superhero movie for sure. But it felt like such a return to form to me. Like the the movie itself felt very different from previous Marvel movies, but like in terms of the stakes and the way the story was told, I loved Shang Chi. I agree with for that. that reason. Yeah. But Barma points out that half of all video games today are the same way. Maybe video games have always been that way. A little, a little over dramatic. And Barma says Hellboy three or two. I can't see from this far away. I've never seen any of the Hellboy movies. I'd recommend. Uh, I, I I haven't seen. If there is a third one, I haven't seen it. But the first two are pretty good. I see the actor doing like cool charity stuff a lot. He'll like go meet with kids in costume. It's charity it when famous actors do it, but when I do it, they tell me that this is a <laughs> Wendy's and ask me to leave. Well, there are there sick kids at the Wendy's? That's the difference. I brought them with me so it could be charity. <laughs> Oh, but Marma says three was expected, but never made. I see. Uh, okay. So there's a ton of crashed ship debris on this planet. And it, uh -huh. it's giving me serious concerns about the quality of training provided by our company. Um, it's not fair. to mention like the impact on shipyard economics. That's got to be huge. I think, uh, well, well, we'll get more lore later. I think that 
the civilization that we came from is just large enough that this is a drop in the bucket for them. The number of ships that have crashed here. Wow. Yeah, they've spread out all over the galaxy and we are but one dusty corner. So, when we get jetpacks, will we be able to fly up these cliffs? Um, the sheer cliffs? Not really, unless you get lucky. It's kind of like climbing in uh, Skyrim. Okay, yeah. Like, maybe not intended, but if you jump in the right spots, you can make it work. Um, yeah, they're mostly good for traveling fast, and then they'll let you get over like the boulders more easily let me see if we have if we're anywhere close to those oh man I'm not even seeing them on the list of things to unlock yet we'll get there I did find we'll another there. upgrade chip or blueprint oh. chip I bet it's from a blueprint trip. Cool. Um, I played an incredible game that I wanted to tell everyone about. It is called What Remains of Edith Finch. Have you heard of this one, Jared? I have heard of this. It seems morose in the way that some of the oh my goodness this dude is a famous he made <sighs> why am i blanking so hard right now danny elfman always works on his films as the composer he's famous for uh tim burton nightmare before christmas is it nightmare before christmas yeah yeah and a bunch of others like Corpse Bride and stuff. It seems in that vein it, it, from what I've seen of it, which isn't much. Mm. I would call it more thoughtful than those, but otherwise otherwise a good comparison. Yeah, it's this story. You're this you're a teenage girl who's exploring her old like family house that four generations of her family have lived in. And she is the only one left alive. Um, they've all died in these like tragic, mysterious accidents. And you get to walk through the whole house and learn the stories of each person and how they died. Um, so not, not the most upbeat plot, <laughs> um, but it's very beautiful. All the stories are really well done. The overall story is really well done. And then like the stories of each individual person are. Um, the thing that was so cool and different and unique about this game and why I've been recommending it every chance I get is that it felt less like a video game and more like a movie where they just chose to use video game mechanics to tell that story. It, there's no like skills that you're developing. There aren't even any like real choices that you make. You're just walking through the story. And each story about each individual family member will have different game mechanics. And they are so creative, so different from each other, and do such a good job of like reinforcing the story that they're telling. So um, I played through the whole thing in like two hours. The next day I played through it one and a half more times to get all the achievements. Wow. Um, I'm playing through it again with my wife. Uh, it's So it's a very quick story that you can come back to if you want. Um, yeah, I recommend it. What remains of Edith Finch? Is the main character Edith Finch? Yeah. Does she die at the end? I cannot tell you that. Okay. That's fair. That's probably a massive spoiler. <laughs> ah, dang it. All right, we're going to build my first tier three veg tube. 
Nice. Very excited for this. It has legs for some reason. And I can't place it anywhere here. Maybe it needs to go yeah. outside. Yeah, I think so. All right. I I do wish this job did this game did a better job of like telling you when things need to go outside. Because there's stuff that has to be inside, and there's stuff that has to be outside, and there's stuff that can be either. And I just uh, kind of let you figure that out. Is there any strategic choice here in terms of placement? No, it's it's kind of nice to keep things of the same type bunched together in case you need to like strip them down for resources or like trade out seeds or things like that. But um, like mechanically, there's no difference. Okay. I think I'm gonna wait. I, I don't know why this just occurred to me, but when you have something outside like this, can it be destroyed by a meteorite? It cannot. Okay. Only you and I can be destroyed by meteorites. Everything okay. else is indestructible. Well, good for it. We should apply some of that same technology to our suits. Yeah. Can you imagine if you could just like take siding from your house and make clothes out of it and become invincible? <laughs> That'd be pretty neat. So I feel like that's actually pretty similar to like what a a modern day body armor is you know hmm. it's like hey we built this tank and it's bulletproof and somebody's like hey what if we cut a little piece out and strap it to a guy then they're bulletproof <laughs> if it works it works I guess I had a professor in college and his whole thing was being interdisciplinary like he'd started out as a mechanical engineering professor, but then just like gave that up for his whole brand to be interdisciplinary. And one of the things he had worked on was um, using origami designs in mechanical engineering. And uh, one of the things that they made was like a pop out riot shield <laughs> that was the size of I don't know, like eight feet wide and four feet tall. And it was like folded in an origami pattern. Wow. Was, um, it, was it good? Do you know if it was good? I never got a chance to riot against one of them, so I can't say. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe maybe next time you see him, you can just, you know, try throwing a rock at him or something and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it real slow, too, so he has time to... Unfold his, his shield. Riot shield, yeah. It's gotta be heavy. You know, just because you can make it smaller by volume doesn't mean that it, or not volume, but surface area doesn't mean that you're getting rid of mass. You know, it's gotta be super heavy. Yeah, that's a good point. Berkeley, you know the Fallout 4 radio. Yeah. You've listened to that. Anytime I see the word uranium, immediately in my head, uranium fever has gone and got me down. Oh, I have to be so honest. I uh, know the concept of the Fallout 4 radio, but I have not left it turned on long enough. <gasps> what? To That's to okay. Get any references. It is iconic. It is also limited. There are not that many songs that it can play. Yeah, understandable. So, well, I mean, if you're going to spend however many years Bethesda spent making it, you could probably spend a couple months just putting together like several hours worth of music 
and getting the rights. I don't know. You're Maybe right. I'm expecting Come too on, much. Bethesda. <laughs> Not understandable anymore. My job in society is to criticize everything. Someone's got to do it. So I started reading a book about, or not about necessarily, but containing time travel, mm. which I tend to avoid because it, I don't know, like in Harry Potter, for example, I think that JK Rowling didn't really think ahead when including time turners in uh -huh. her world and then immediately had to come up with a reason why yes they exist but no they can't ever be used for anything except for this one time yep and this book does similar um, i haven't finished it i'm not even halfway through it so i don't want to i don't want to spread the name around and and besmirch it or praise it um until i've had a chance to finish it and give a proper opinion but i will say oh i just i think i just suffocated or something oh dang Maybe I dehydrated to death. Who can say? Regardless. That can happen. Um, the one critical point of the book is figuring out how to save a life and choosing a life to save that is important enough that it fundamentally changes history for the better. And that just got me thinking like who 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 could i think of that that would do that you know one of the one of the things the book suggests uh is i don't know a lot about the guy but fred hampton who i believe was killed by the chicago police but he was um involved with the black panthers and uh running for political office in his community and from the sound of it, making a lot of positive change. So I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I guess I was curious, chat, if you could go back in time and save a life uh, in order to make the maximum positive impact on the world, do you have any idea who it might be? I Personally, I don't, because there's just so many complicated interactions that might be impossible to choose, but... I found it a fascinating question. I know who Phil Collins would not choose. The guy that he let drown. Whoa, what? In <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Phil Collins in the air tonight. Uh I think I, I don't know if he actually let the guy drown. Now that I'm thinking about the lyrics, he, he might have watched another guy let a third guy drown. Okay. But alas, somebody made that choice. I, I have not listened to that song very well, apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe I haven't either. I don't know. I don't know if I can say, like, this is the person I would choose, but one that comes to mind is uh, Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. um, he was a computer scientist in the f 50s um, he was involved in like decoding things with the Enigma machine I believe Yeah. Um, he was also just like prophetic in his descriptions of AI I, I read a paper that he wrote in like in the early 1950s describing how eventually we might have computer algorithms that are able to l learn from data and like basically described the way that machine learning works today um not that that's like the most important thing to salvage but i think it's sad that we lost him so young um he was gay and the british government like 
forced him to go on medication to make him not gay, which I don't know if it worked or not, but it did drive him to uh, severe mental health issues that resulted in his death. So yeah, very sad story of how he died and why he died um, and all the things that he was not able to contribute because of that. Yeah, it's it's fascinating to think where we might be today um, if we had another 30 to 40 years of input from somebody visionary like that. Or, I don't know, Tesla I think was older when he died, but he was yeah. destitute. And if, if somebody mm -hmm. had taken care of him or like provided some stability i think he also was very mentally ill um not because he was chemically castrated or anything but um just as a person whoa this sand is so shiny that okay that's a whiplash moment right there grim discussion to shiny sand <laughs> Zimu says there's so many people. Yeah, it's hard hard to think about choosing one. Like so many different fields, so many different people who like maybe deserved it more or less, or like could have an impact. Um, so what's what's your take on the book overall? It sounded like maybe he was a little not thought through is that what you said with the harry potter comparison um yeah i i mean the thing about any sort of time travel especially when it doesn't cost anything except time um is that it, it would be very easy to want to use it for other things and so this author similarly uh has created an artificial constraint that could be easily like worked around i guess but that's the way they decided to do it so you know you got to respect that but there's i think for me there's always this sense that there's like potential storylines or thoughts um that that will always be missing there because of that mm. But I, I understand that it's also kind of a fundamental limitation of any type of storytelling. You can't just let folks run around doing whatever. Uh, <laughs> those of you who've played D&D might understand that sentiment. <laughs> but yeah, overall the book, I, I find it pretty engaging. Um, I've enjoyed it so far. We'll see. Uh, how I feel about it once I make some more progress in it. But yeah, it's pretty interesting so far. Nice. And did you say you're declining to say the name until you finish it and can give it a solid thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah. Okay. Well, I will wait with bated breath on our Discord for that. <laughs> Hopefully not too baited. It's long. It might <laughs> take me a while. Um... Jared, do you use Goodreads? I don't. I've heard... Well, most of the book-loving people in my life do, especially from my generation, because everything we do must be, uh, I guess, capitalized on in that way. Um, so I've heard it's a great way to share recommendations or, or disrecommendations. What would you call that? Dissuasion. Um, but yeah, I know nothing beyond that. I, I enjoy it. I, I think that the main thing that would make me enjoy it more is having more Goodreads friends. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, post my Goodreads profile on our Discord after this. And if anyone wants to connect on there, feel free. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy having it keep a record of the books that I've read. It's nice that it, it'll like, it encourages you to set an annual goal for the number of books you want to read. And then it will like track your progress through the year, which is nice. Um, and then it's fun just like going through and seeing the full list of books that I've, I've logged on there. And then the other thing I really like with it is being able to, if there's a book that I've heard about, 
and I'm not sure if I want to read it or not. I can just like quickly see if uh, any of my friends have left reviews and that helps me decide if I want to read it. Yeah. Um, that Yeah, it's nice. That is nice. I one of the things that I struggle with on a personal level is movie m movie reviews, movie reviews. Um I just have never really trusted film critics to share a similar taste with me. Mm -hmm. And so I've usually found film reviews to be unhelpful unless the movie was just so clearly bad to begin with in <laughs> Borderlands um, <laughs> that, that, you know, I just, it confirms what I already knew, right? I'm looking for somebody to confirm my bias is what I'm mm -hmm. saying basically, but in terms of movie taste. And so having a peer review site like that, I think adds a lot more utility than like a critical review site does. Um, mm -hmm. or even a general public review like Rotten Tomatoes has both. Um, I, just, I feel that that's meaningless, but with Goodreads, these are people, you know, you can gauge their tastes and compare it to yours. And that makes the reviews much more meaningful than they would be otherwise. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I recommend it. It's a, it's a good site. the funny quirk about it for me is that I created it in like 2012 and hooked it up to my Facebook account. So most of my Goodreads friends are the people that I was Facebook friends with in 2012 and also had Facebook <laughs> or also had Goodreads at the time. Yeah. Um, which is not necessarily the people that I most want to connect with on books, but it's, I'm padding it slowly with people that I still interact with and uh, care about. That's awesome. I Hopefully this isn't too depressing, but I've recently been thinking about my Facebook and how uh, like dead it is. Not, not that I post all the time or really all that often over the last few years but um, it's just fascinating to see how much of my Facebook feed has become AI generated content over the last two years oh really yeah and and I get a lot of recommendations for pages that I, I don't follow I don't know why Facebook thinks I'm interested in them like random things I have no idea so it's it's always a little bit awkward to me, which makes me want to use it even less. And, uh, Berkeley, have you heard of the dead internet theory? Oh yeah. So for those of you who don't Berkeley, would you feel comfortable giving a brief explanation? I can, if you don't want to. Yeah. I, so I don't remember if it's something that they say has already happened or like will happen soon or, hadn't happened yet when the theory came out but is happening now um but just this concept that we're getting to a place or are heading toward a place where most social media content is ai generated and um you can't like you can never trust that th that the things on the internet were true but now you can't even trust that they're from a person yeah which is um It's kind of lame, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, I, so I'm a Reddit user, and I, I think that that's happening in a lot of places. What's interesting about Reddit particularly is that it is anonymous, if you want to be anonymous. And it's also not really about the individual necessarily it's more about spheres of interest if that makes sense so you can really really tailor what it is that you see um like i got into reddit because that's where uh people who knew how to script in the uh, language that this game i wanted to mod used and i so i had access to a live community there 
that I could go to for help. So I created my Reddit account specifically to get help with a mod that I was making for a game. And it's just kind of grown from there. I know we sat down one time, Brooklyn, I read through all the weird random subreddits that I follow. <laughs> that was that was fun. Uh, uh but in in that context, like there's no proof that any user is who they say they are is a real person or you know there's no proof of anything essentially except that that they <laughs> that they can generate text and, and put it into reddit's api uh, i mm -hmm. guess so it's just weird there to see a lot of posts and then in the comments you have people actively debating in almost every big subreddit whether or not the post was made by an ai um whether based on one is it original content which often it's not uh, two how are they replying do their replies seem like ai or not um and then you know to go from that to facebook where you know people have profile pictures they have whole profiles that tell you about them but things have progressed far enough that you still can't really be sure. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of disorienting the whole thing. Maybe we're not even real. This stream is AI right now. Oh, we, we started before AI was good enough. So you can, you can check the timestamps of our old YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good system. I mean, that, um, it's true though. It's mind blowing to see where we've come since we started streaming. There was a yeah. lot of doubt when we started streaming that AI would be taking jobs, and it's already happened. It's crazy. That is crazy. Anyway, I sorry. had a trippy experience on um, on LinkedIn. I just randomly came across a profile that had um, it was a woman's face, but her name was my first and last name. The, the first name was spelled differently. And uh, her location was the city that I lived in before my current location. So I'm, you know, 99% sure that that is a bot who just like took my name and location and changed it to just create a LinkedIn profile. And I don't know what to do about that, except not trust LinkedIn profiles. That's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, d I really don't like that because identity theft is, is you know, kind of, it's been turned into a comedic kind of, you know, scammers in call centers, like we're going to prank them type situation, but stuff like that where it's not clear what the point of doing that is bothers me more if that makes sense mm -hmm. because I, I don't understand why somebody would want to do that. It can't be something good, but because I can't clearly see how they would benefit that almost feels like it's, it's worse than if somebody were to just try to directly scam me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to like think of possibilities for why someone would want to do that, the most generous is that they were creating a few fake profiles to test like some uh, affirmative action kind of thing. Like, do I get more profile hits as a woman than a man or something like that? Some other sort of research via LinkedIn. And so they wanted to create a bunch of fake profiles to test that. That's like the most generous thing I can think of. Um, I think much more likely, the most likely I think is that someone is just selling fake connections that look real. So that if you are a recent college grad and trying to find a job, you can pay a hundred bucks or whatever to get a thousand LinkedIn connections. Um, someone could be like using a bunch of fake accounts that way. Um, I think the most malicious thing that they might be doing is just using a bunch of fake profiles to make another profile look real. So that that profile can do phishing attempts against other people like say hey come apply for my job and then send a link that's malicious um yeah no 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 good options for for why someone would set up a fake profile 
using my yeah. name and location. Yeah, the the affirmative action is the I I don't think I would have considered that. But that actually is a good and interesting thing. Okay, we're doing a scientific experiment in a live environment, I guess. Yeah, and I I called that one out as an example. There's lots of other experiments that you could do if you want to just like test things on LinkedIn. It doesn't have to be about gender or race or anything. There is a book by a guy named Christopher Wiley, and the title is explicit, so I'm not going to say it here. But this dude was involved with the Cambridge Analytica uh, data mining on Facebook that was used to help sway the 2016 election and spread disinformation and figure out who's susceptible to what and model communities. And if you're curious about what types of experiments you can do in a social media network like that, um, Christopher Wiley has written a book that has a lot of good information out there uh, that explains some of that stuff. Would you be comfortable linking that on Discord later? Yeah, I can share that on Discord. Um, I will say the author tries to paint himself as a unknowing participant in what he did he don't believe that he left Cambridge Analytica and then immediately started another firm that does basically the same thing so even though in the book he comes off as apologetic uh, and kind of like ah uh, you know I I opened the lid on Pandora's box but I didn't know what I was doing um, yeah that's not really the case and he's not really sorry so just keep that in mind other than that very informative book and i'll link it in the discord cool. so i have a friend just getting back to the goodreads thing I think he uses Goodreads. I, I'm not 100% sure because I don't use it myself, but he mentioned to me that he has a goal of reading enough books that the stack of books will be as tall as him by the end of the year. And that, That's a creative goal. I think he's 6'5". I don't know how, cl <laughs> how close he is to achieving his goal, uh, but I bought him a extremely thick book for his birthday. Um, oh, that's so thoughtful. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see if he can finish it. Uh, but it is a book I would recommend if you're into history. It's called The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and it's written by a reporter who was in um, Germany pre-Hitler, uh, was expelled during his rise, and then after the war got access to a ton of first- and second-hand documents and wrote a book detailing the rise and fall of the third reich the title um with those documents and it is an amazing guide to fascist talking points and behavior um, if you are at all interested in politics or history 10 out of 10 would recommend it's really long but it is one of the best uh, books that I've read and very relevant to our political scene today, I would say. Do you say the the book comes out pro or against fascist rhetoric? <laughs> <laughs> against. Just for clarity, so against. we're all on the same page. <laughs> against. Pro. Both Wait. Things. Against. <laughs> oh, man. Could you imagine? Sorry for insinuating anything. You just said it was a guide to <laughs> fascist rhetoric. Yeah. No, that's that. That's a good point to clarify because not everybody will be on the same page about what that should mean. All right. So I died in this big ship trying to get mm. out. And I don't know where I was when I died. Dang. We don't care about spacesuits, right? No. 
Okay. Are you doing any right hand roll in your exploration? That would be smart. So okay. far, I've just been running around as fast as I can in every direction. <laughs> I have done my fair share of that. Uh, when, when we get later later in the game, you can breathe for a lot longer, and it totally changes the feel of, of those wrecks. To be able to walk slowly and calmly and remember where you've been. <laughs> There's no absolute panic to get back to whatever area you have that has oxygen access. Nope. Oh, did we, um, I think I missed it. Did we get like a milestone for getting blue skies? We must have, because I don't have the tutorial hint on my screen anymore. Huh. Oh, well. no. Oh, no. Oh, that was bad. Dang it. I deconstructed the door of this container I was trying to go into to get oxygen. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Alright, can I rebuild it in time? No. Okay. Wow. Oh no, and it put me inside the container too without a door. That's mm. hilarious. You need me to rescue you? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Yes, I do. I do not have all the things I would need to be able to craft this. Unless I destroy it oh, completely. I th think if you tap F4 a few times, it might just, like, move you through the roof. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. just did that as, like, a last measure in case you run into a bug and uh, get clipped through the wall. That is clever of them to think of that. Yeah. I wonder if it's just something they added for their own testing purposes and then like it was useful enough that they just left it in. Like the uh I assume the like console commands in Fallout are the same way where you can just uh type code into a little window and it affects your game. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it works. You hit tilde and then type whatever console commands that you can find online. Yeah, I'm just I'm assuming that they made that for their developers and then didn't bother taking it out rather than a tool that they made with the players in mind. That's a good question. Bethesda traditionally has allowed access to stuff like that in their single player games. Skyrim's the same way, so mm -hmm. it definitely starts as a tool for developers, but I do wonder if it was intentionally included in the final product or the players because yeah, we sure go through a lot of water like pretty fast we do you have tiny tiny platters in space <laughs> We need, um, oh, what are they called in Dune? Still suits. Still suits, yeah. Just pump all of our excretions right back into our mouths. <laughs> you know, when you put it that way, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe we don't. Frank Herbert said it, not me. Ah, uh, yes. Frank Herbert, the great visionary who brought us space Islam and space heroin and space authoritarianism. I'm sure space authoritarianism was a thing before. <laughs> Mike says, Frank Herbert, they could never make me like you. Yeah, luckily no one's trying. Even Dune fans are not trying to make you like Frank Herbert. Um, there should be a bunch more water if you want to grab it. 
I will definitely do that if I can survive going back to our main area. Cool, at cool. At least one time. I just craft water? I guess not. Darn. Um, if there's any ice around and you have ingredients for a crafting machine, you can craft water. Berkeley, are you starting a nuclear program single-handedly right now? I saw you uh, created a nuclear reactor and you just made a launching platform? I did not make a launching platform, we just unlocked it because our uh, terraformation index got high enough. Okay, so we're 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 pulling the Iranian. We don't have it, but we could. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, at eight seventy-five KTI, we get an atmospheric water collector, which just pulls water straight from the air. Oh, we have clouds now. Look at that! Mm. I didn't even notice that. Very nice. So. We're putting all this water into the air. We're yeah. making the air, and then we're just going to mm -hmm. take it back. This feels like a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> yeah, just just wait till we get to the part where we sell it to, to the other inhabitants of the world. Are there... Uh, is that... No, there's that was a joke. Okay. Speaking of people that we were friends with back in 2012... <laughs> this has only happened to me one time, but Michael Seed, who we ran cross country with together uh, for years, reached out to me randomly, like a year after I graduated high school, and he wanted to sell me supplements. Mm. And I never replied to him because, you know, my physique is perfect. I don't need supplements. Right. Um, but it just what happened to you man you were cool in person but now you want to sell me supplements I don't do I seem like the type of guy who has supplement money because I don't <laughs> anyways I don't know if that's happened to you but that um yeah my my cousin uh sells supplements on Instagram and uh, I've got mixed feelings she also gives really good health advice for free though so it feels like a good deal overall and that's that's where I'm like okay I, I I do think there's some value to be had there but I also think that it needs to be something where I don't know man is is it is it bad of me to dislike cold calls like that because I don't like it even if there is legitimate purpose there. Did you come oh, to give yeah, me no water so it. that I don't die? Oh no, but I can do that. Do you have oxygen also? Yeah. You're my hero. I, I picked up a box from when you died. I didn't excellent. realize it was from when you died. Excellent. Thank you. So much. Um, Susie Moo asks if Either of us have played Satisfactory. Have you played it? No. Is it a factory game? Is the it, title a pun? It is a factory game. I've watched a lot of gameplay about it because I on Reddit on the Reddit for this game, I see a lot of recommendations for Satisfactory. And uh yeah, it it looks like a blast. I've got it on my wish list. Um It's like a it's somewhere between Planet Crafter and Factorio. There's like a lot more automation and factory building than this game, but it's all first person unlike Factorio. Yeah, I have a brother-in-law who bought me Factorio and I mm. learned that I'm very bad at the type of fighting against bugs that takes place in Factorio. Oh, but maybe I would be better in first person because I I don't know. My brain thinks better in that way. I don't know I if it actually has any fighting. Susie Moo, can you let us know? Chance says Satisfactory has significantly less alien fighting. Good that is very good news for my survival. 
I did not make it through the third tutorial in Factorio before getting my butt kicked multiple times. And then moving on to Helldivers, which is just even more insanity fighting alien bugs, to be so, fair. So <laughs> Factorio was too much bug fighting, and then you went to Helldivers? That was your Fact path there? Yeah, I, and I think Factorio would have been fine, except that like I couldn't keep my stuff built. And in Helldivers, if you die, you just die. In Factorio, mm. if you die, the bugs then proceed to trash your stuff. And that Oh, that's awful. That was the that was the last straw for me. Because I worked hard for my stuff. Yeah, I'm down with games where you can die, but games where your stuff gets wrecked, that just that grinds my gears. I cannot get into those. Berkeley, there's about to be a blue chest behind you. Oh no, I even gave you air and water. <laughs> you know what I did? I squandered you your gift of life, and I am back no. in the outpost that I've died so many times <laughs> trying to get home from. Okay, I'll uh, no, no, bring you more. I, don't enable me. I'm going to make a crafter here, and I Here's... am going to live with the consequences of my actions. Okay. Wow, crafters aren't even expensive. Yeah, man. You should be making those everywhere, left and right. All right. Iron and silicon, let's do this. That's titanium. That's ice, which I will need later. Probably, if there is a later. Iron. Boom. Silicon. Nope, that's also iron. Magnesium. Susie Moose says, Satisfactory is basically you're on a planet and you have a list of things to gather and make, and you just check off things on your list. If you like gathering and making machines to gather stuff and crossing stuff off a list, it's amazing. That sounds right up my alley. And Chance says, in Satisfactory, there's always one lightly aggressive alien protecting resource nodes, but they don't attack things you have built. Once you fight them off, they pretty much leave you alone. Cool. I like That's that. That's cool. Like a little bit of combat, but your stuff is safe. It's perfect. Just yeah, the right I, amount of challenge. I am worried that I'm going to get Satisfactory and then like not do anything else for three months. Except my job and my child rearing. Obviously, I'll keep doing those too. I don't know. Food Some and exercise are, are right out though. It's negotiable, isn't it? <laughs> Do you ever think how we've created games to like simulate the type of things that we were designed to do biologically? And I don't know. It's just funny to me that we now have like gathered the re like we were hunter gatherers and then we created society and specialized, but inside we all still kind of wanted to be hunter gatherers. <laughs> it is funny, and I do think about that a lot. Yeah. Something, something, monkey brain. I think I need that on a t shirt. That quote. <laughs> something something monkey brain. I like it. With maybe like a like a chimpanzee wearing a tuxedo and a top hat and a monocle. Well that's getting dangerously close to a uh, sounding like an NFT. Oh no. Guys. <laughs> he who look, peanuts a Suzy move. I can't stand selling supplements but i'll tell you i have made this little monkey guy and he's worth two hundred thousand dollars yeah and you will be the only one to have this specific monkey guy it's worth it trust me bro please everyone just one can more, look please. at it and think about it and enjoy it but only you can pay me for it Only privilege. you can pay Smokey to fight forest fires. <laughs> That's awesome.
I died on our staircase, and so my blue chest is like at a 45 degree angle. And when I first saw it, it looked sideways. That was kind of fun. Did you guys ever ride laundry baskets down the stairs? Oh, heck yeah. This this stairway that you have built would be so good for that. Mm -hmm. You would definitely die at the bottom, though. That would be... You've broken everything by the time you hit the bottom. For sure. Unless you duct taped housing siding all over your body. <laughs> we don't need Could cushioning. Fun. We need Tyvek everywhere. That will fix this. My sister and her partner have started using the catchphrase uh, could be fun. I like that. And I, I love it. Berkeley, were you telling me that they make really good pie? Yeah, my sister makes great pie. Chat, number one pie flavor. I'll go first. When it's made right, pecan pie. So good. I have never been a huge pecan pie fan, but I don't know if I've had the good stuff, you know? That's very open-minded of you to say, but it is okay to hate it. I think that the bitterness of the pecans, and sometimes it can be a little slimy too, depending on how it's made, can be off-putting. And I, I can accept that. <laughs> Meg says number one pie flavor, no pie, pie sucks. That is uh, wow. so weird that you think that, but I'm not going to try to stop you. Meg, I just want to ask, what's it like to be completely uncool? I've never <laughs> been there. Uh, Babarma says strawberry rhubarb. Nice. That is, that's one of my top ones. That's one that like, if it's done well, it's, it's right. Personally, I'm partial to a, to a cherry pie. My fave. Is there a specific type of cherry, like the canned maraschino cherries or? Do people make pies out of maraschino cherries? I feel like you need a, that'd be excessive. I think. <laughs> like too sweet do you think or yeah and it's just too much you know like too neon flavored yeah the toxic oh, red dye out. slowly causing you to go insane with rage mm -hmm. yeah um megan in the chat says to jared i have done cool things you could not even dream of i mean chief among those being not eating pie? I don't know. By the way, just the, I just want to point out that the concept of streaming is wild. We're having fun bullying my friends over random miscellaneous taste differences. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I would and argue that that is not uh, core to the concept of streaming. I think you could stream without that, and you could do that without streaming. I think those are two independent activities that we're engaging in. That's fair. They are independent, but the fact that there is overlap of those two things. <laughs> Meg says, oh, this is fun for you? <laughs> <laughs> For me, this is just a really poorly paying day job that happens at night. Wow. Do you, I mean, are you getting like hourly? I'm getting just none, nonely for now, but one day I'm going to make it big. You have been enslaved. This is, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, Berkeley. I, I thought this whole operation was your idea. Cue the Anakin meme. This whole operation was your idea and you're not getting paid. Not getting it's paid. Tough. Did you think that I was getting paid this whole time? I thought that you were like the number one Twitch guy. <laughs> I want that on a hat. Like the number one Twitch guy. <laughs> but Barma says you need to analyze this situation with my new Zen diagram. <laughs> Zen Does it diagram. come with supplements?
If you had to sell something, is there something you think you could sell door-to-door, -door, Berkeley? I don't know that there's anything in my life. Maybe, maybe audio gear. But even that, like, I might be qualified to talk about it, but I don't think I could sell you anything in good conscience. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I believe in enough to try to sell to another person. Oh, actually, once a year, some little kids come around selling strawberry freezer jam and i oh, buy it yeah and i would i would go door to door reselling that although then i wouldn't get to eat it so never mind it, i'm back to nothing you mark it up and then reinvest the profits in more for yourself Ooh, but then i would feel like i was taking advantage of those kids you know ah uh, you just gotta think about it differently just get some unpaid interns to do summer sales for you and then it's not the kids you're taking advantage of, it's the interns. Which is completely more palatable because they applied. They did apply. All right, well, it's about that time of night again. Look at all these cool storage lockers Berkeley built, amazing. And we have made it to the clouds stage and we're 30% on our way to rain. Which seems like a pretty good place to be. I like the rain. Rain might be my favorite weather. Hmm. Yeah, that is a hot take. Hotter than not liking pie, even. Really? Which was quite quite a hot take. I just, I'm trying to get to grips with, like, no pie at all. What about, like, is it the crust? Do you just not like the crust? Is that what makes it bad? Because, like, you could have, like, a like a chocolate pudding in a pie crust. If you like chocolate pudding and you put it in a pie crust, it becomes pie. That's true. So, like, you Mike could says it's hot fruit, you... Okay, so you don't like fruit pie. That's okay. There's other really good pies out there. I challenge you to be, to open your mind to the possibilities of pie. You can put anything in a pie shell and it's pie. Oh, Susie Moo agrees with you on the rain. She says in, uh, in video games and in real life. That's her favorite weather. Respect. I think it's so soothing. Also, it is the opposite of hot, which I like. I don't like hot. Well, I guess cold is the true opposite of hot. But rain accompanies that, I guess. All right. Well, Berkeley, do you want me to show anything before we call it a night? Um, I just want to point out, I don't know if anyone has been watching these numbers close enough to care, but we've about doubled our velocity on all three of our terraformation measurements so that's good um i think next time we might uh start a little space program what do you think down for that down to clown on the moon what what i didn't even know this was possible until right now so yeah i am i'm assuming we don't start by sending animals on one-way death missions to see what it's like to have things in space no, unfortunately, we only send, like, satellites that help us. We don't get to ever actually send ourselves up with this initial launch platform. Okay. But we, it, does, it does do good things for us. You'll see. I'm all for that. I cannot wait to see. Awesome. Oh, I can make a biodome next time, too. Cool. Um, well, thanks everyone for joining us. This has been Planet Crafter with us, SV Terror. We used to just play Stardew Valley, and now I do other things. We built um, come a whole our... brand just around we... that, and now we've <laughs> yeah. changed. We sure have. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Please join our Discord. There's a link to that in our link tree, which you can find in the description of this video if you're on YouTube, or in the About section of our bio if you're watching here on Twitch. Um, 
You can also follow us everywhere that we are. Those links are also in that link tree. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. Thanks for coming out, everybody. See you Bye. next time. Bye.